Hey, oh my God. Is that the 4.0 from AM Fresh Washing? Thank you, AM Fresh Washing, for sending me my skin today. No, I'm just kidding. All right, everybody, this is our how-to video. So when you first get your skid and you depalletize it and you get it installed in your van, your trailer, your truck, whatever you're gonna do, I'm gonna show you steps. So usually packed in behind here, you're gonna have a hose. This hose has a ball valve on this end. You will literally put it into this bulkhead, screw it into it, it also comes with a packet. You've got a hard water adapter. You've got a ball valve. you got your inlet for your DI tank. You have a TDS meter. You have O-rings and you have your tips for your wand. You'll want to come over here and you want to put water in your tank above the pump. So with the water in the tank, you'll have an air pocket here. So you literally loosen this with your fingers and as water starts dripping, you tighten it back up with your fingers. And guess what? That's how you prime your pump. You want to get this air pocket out of your hose. Pull the hose out a little bit. Lock your reel back in. Pull your wand out. Now, on the back side of your engine, you have a start switch. So on this, this little switch here on the back, up is on, down is off. So you flip it up. Over here, you have your fuel. Fuel on is forward, fuel off, fuel on. Choke off, choke on. Idle, wide open. So to, when you first start your engine, always flip your choke, make sure your fuel's on, turn your idle up, flip your switch up for your engine, and you it. And then there's your water. Cut it off, you flip your switch off. As soon as you flip it off, always take the pressure off your wine. Disconnect it, drain the water out. When you get ready to go to your next job, you put it in, in a little bit of an angle, and it locks in. Loosen your hose up, coil your hose. I always place the hose behind, that way it's not in the way. Lock it up. And that is your how to get your pressure washer up and going. Hard water adapter. This is how you hook your hard water adapter up to be able to run hard water and not put hard water back in your tank. So first, you wanna shut this ball valve off. Second, you wanna loosen this hose up. So when you loosen up the hose, make sure your screen stays in there. Then you hook up your hard water adapter. As soon as you hook up your hard water adapter, you disconnect this coupler from your bypass to the tank and you hook the bypass up to here. Now you hook a water hose to this in and it goes to the customer's property for their hard water. When you get done running the hard water through your system, if you're cleaning concrete or cleaning bird nests out from underneath the solar panels, as soon as you're done, like the way we do it, We'll clean the nest out from underneath the solar panels. We'll wash the gutters out. Then we go down below and clean all the concrete or whatever down below to get up all the bird poop and pee and, and the nest and all that. But as soon as we're done, we reverse this. So the ball valve is off. You disconnect this coupler. You hook it back up to your tank. You disconnect your hard water adapter. You hook this hose back up, but don't tighten it all the way. You wanna turn your ball valve on, and as soon as you start seeing it drip, you tighten it up with your fingers. Only use your fingers. Do not use pliers, because you'll crush that little screen gasket in there, and then you're gonna have a major leak, and it's gonna be sucking air, and you'll never be able to run the pressure washer correctly. Disconnect the hose from your wand. You don't wanna leave it hooked to your wand, because if you let go of the trigger, guess what? All that hard water goes into bypass mode back into your tank. So you want to do this, flip up the switch, pull the choke, crank it. There you go. 
push all the hard water out. So when you let it run for two or three minutes, you'll flush all the hard water out of your pump and out of your 300 foot of hose. As soon as that's done, you hook it back up to your one, spool it back behind your pressure washer, and now you've you flushed all the hard water out and you put DI water back into the system and you're ready to go to your next job. So that's how you put on your hard water adapter. Whenever you get your DI tank system and you've done got your hose hooked into your tank, you got everything plumbed in, ready to go, have it hard mounted, you hook your DI tanks like this right here. So you want these pieces right here to go long ways. Off of this hose, we have what you call a jumper hose. So you're gonna take your caps off your tanks, screw the mail in first. Screw that one in, I always turn the hose clamps to the bottom. So when you screw that in, before you strap it into these straps, leave it loose so you can hook up this piece. When you hook up this piece, make sure it's tight. Make sure this one's tight. Take off your caps. Inside your, your pack that comes with your skid, you have an inlet fitting for the DI tank. This is where you hook your water hose and this goes to your customer's property. So it says on the tank, in, out, in, out. So you hook this up to your end, hook a water hose to it, Go to your customer's property. This fitting right here goes over here. This is your out. When you tighten that up, make sure you turn this ball valve off and make sure this one's turned on. When you hook up water, it's gonna go through both tanks and it's gonna start filling your 100 gallon tank. If you wanna run a water fed pole, you turn this ball valve off, hook a water hose up to here and go to your water fed pole. On your water fed pole, you'll have a long hose on it. You turn this ball valve on, and this water is going to go through this tank to your water fed pole. The hose on your water fed pole, you're going to have a valve on it as well. So you can turn that one on, and you can start cleaning windows or solar panels or however you're using it. But then when you get done, shut it off and make sure you turn this one back on for that way you got water going into here. So this is how you hook up your DI tank. So you got your inlet on the, on the back side, your jumper hose, and then it goes over to this hose for a water fed pole or for your 100 gallon tank. And that's how you hook up your DI tanks. In your packet that comes with your skid, you get a TDS meter. So on your TDS meter, you take it out. You got a little piece on the front, that's where your batteries are at. The bottom is where you can stick this down in the tank or you can put some water in this little cup. The way I do it, if I have water hooked up to the tank, I just go to the little ball valve right here and I tr trickle a little bit of water in there or I go inside the tank and get some water. I put it on, I hit the power button. You never ever wanna go past 100 parts per million. 100 parts per million, you're in hard water again. So you won't see no numbers. You'll see a zero like this with this tank. And all of a sudden you start seeing little numbers and all of a sudden it just starts taking off and it gets faster and faster. But you never wanna let your tanks go past 100. And this is how you check your water with your TDS meter. To turn it off, you just press and hold it. It shuts it off. Store it back in your little leather case and you're ready to rock and roll. This, this is your oil extractor. How to? Everybody wants to know, how do I change my oil? Well, I go on Amazon and I order a oil extractor. It's like a bicycle pump. So when you pull your hose out and you coil it around, you got a little handle right here. So on this hose, this is your inlet fill and your inlet fill for your engine, inlet fill for your pump. So you unscrew this right here and you stick your hose down in there. When you stick your hose down in there, you get your pump and you pump it and it sucks the oil out. It makes it nice and clean and you don't make a mess. I'm not gonna suck the oil out because it's brand new, but I'm just showing you how it goes in there. 
Now on your pump, you want to use a pump oil or a 30 weight non-detergent. Over here on your engine, you want to suck the oil out of here. So you unscrew your cap, stick the hose all the way down into the bottom of your crankcase and suck the oil out there. This takes about a half a quart. Your engine takes about three quarters of a quart. So the engine, you want to use a 10W30 motor oil. Uh, the difference between the motor oil and the pump oil, this is not detergent. You don't want your oil foaming. This won't foam, the motor oil. When you fill this up, fill it all the way out here to the very end until it gets ready to start dripping. That's a full crankcase and you're good to go. But that's how you change the oil in your engine and your pump. Pump is a 30 weight non-detergent or a pump oil. Your engine is a 10W30 motor oil. So that's how you change your oil. Get you an oil extractor. That way you're not making a mess on your deck and it takes two seconds to do it. So in your packet that comes with your pressure washer, you're gonna see some O-rings. You're gonna see some small ones and you're gonna see some large ones. So the small ones go into this coupler the large ones go into the bigger coupler, the one that's on your pressure hose or into this ball valve. So down inside your ball valve, you'll see an O-ring. You'll need to get a pick. Harbor Freight has some. They come in a little four pack, the orange little uh, pick uh, screwdrivers. So this one has a little bit of a curve on it. So you can go down in here, you can grab that O-ring and you can pull it out. And then you get a big one put it in here and you can use your little pick to push it back in place. Once you get it put in place, click it on your plug, on your, um, on your wand, and you can make sure it locks in. And then that way you'll see that it, it's in place properly. Now that's for the O-rings. You got your, your big ones and you got your small ones. We include three of each. Hot water will eat them up quick, but cold water don't, they last a long time. The only thing that you have with repetitive squeezes over a long period of time, you might start getting a little burr right here on your plug. So the little burr makes it kind of hard to take the coupler off your uh, hose. So when you do that, you can file it down a little bit or we can replace the plug, but it, it's not gonna happen for a while. These are stainless steel and they last a long time. You have an assortment of tips. So I'm gonna go over the tips with you. The red one is what we call a zero tip. It shoots a zero and it can do a lot of damage. Don't use the red one unless you want to spray up high and you're trying to rinse something. The yellow one is a 15 degree. So that's your yellow tip. Your green one is a 25 degree. Your white one is a 40 degree. So we're talking about degrees, your fans. So the red one is a zero, it's just a straight stream. This one is a 15 degree, that's about like this right here. The, the green one is a 25, it's a little bit wider, and the white one is a 40, it's a wider fan. So you can pick which one works best for you. The one that I use in the industry cleaning concrete is the green one. I use this one all the time. Some of my guys use the yellow one, but I use the green one. When you put it in, you stick it in, and you wanna make sure, so when you stick it in, you wanna pull back on your coupler, and when you push it in, push it, and you'll see it lock and click in place. Make sure it is clicked in place. Because if you don't, when you squeeze this trigger, it's like a gun. You're gonna shoot your tip out, and then you're gonna be like, oh shit, where's my tip at? Make sure you plug it in place. So like I said, when you put your tip in, pull back on the coupler, and push and make sure it clicks and locks in place. That's how you put your tips in. On your fuel tank, on your engines, on your pressure washer, you have a fuel fill. I personally get one of these motorcycle jugs and it come, you can get the extended hose on it. So when you're using the 5.0, since you have the overhead, it's kind of hard to get in there. You want an extension hose. This one is easy. Believe it or not, these little engines can run for almost eight hours on one fill. They go a long time. But I always keep gas with you because if you run it the day before and you forgot about it, that you didn't top your tank off, I always keep a jug of gas with you. You can get like a gallon jug that will fill this tank. You don't have to get the five gallon like I do. You can get a little gallon jug, but you fill your fuel right here. So that's where you fill your fuel at. 
When we ship them, they come with fuel in them and they're ready to go. You got your, all your oils in them. You don't have to put oil in your pressure washers and you don't have to top them off with fuel. We already have them ready for you. As soon as you get the skids from us, watch this videos that we're sending you. Make sure you got everything dialed in and you're ready to start cleaning. Got any more questions? Give me a shout out. Peace.